Hey guys, this is the second tutorial of this course. Before we dive in, I am going to say, if you don't understand something, please don't be disappointed, just watch the video for second or third time until you understand. In the previous video, we've added the background. We currently don't have the player. But, before creating the player we will create some grounds where the player will run. First, we will know how would you be able to navigate the scene view. If we want to move the scene around, we can click the mouse wheel button and then drag around. Or if we right click and drag the mouse, this will also work the same way. Now, we can see a camera icon in the middle of the scene view. But, I think this icon confuses us. So, I will make it invisible. To do that we will click on this drop down and then scroll down a little. Now, click on this camera icon which will make it invisible. However, I am going to create an empty game object. So, we have to right click and select create empty, then name it ground 1. We will need multiple images to create a single ground. Now, we will start creating the ground. We will actually put some ground images inside of the ground 1 game object. So, if we open the sprites folder, we can see there is three images that can be used to make the ground and we will use all of them to create the ground. So, let's start by drag and dropping the ground start image onto the ground one game object. We can't see this game object now. If you also cannot see the game object, just go ahead and reset the position. Now, we will drag and drop the ground mid game object onto the ground one game object. Now, Reset the transform component. Ok, we can see the ground mid is now placed in front of ground start. I want to move the ground mid image next to the ground start image. So, I am going to select the ground mid game object. Here we will change the X position to 1.28. Now, we can see they are now attached to each other and there is no empty space between them. Now, I'm going to explain how did I know that we've to put the value 1.28. Actually, 1.28 is the length of ground start image. Let me show you what I wanted to mean. If I right click on the ground start image and press show in explorer, and then if we hover over the cursor on the image, we can see the dimension which is 128 into 93. Here, 128 pixel is the width and 93 pixel is the height. So, it means 128 is the length. But, when we want to calculate the pixel value inside Unity, we have to calculate it in different format. Because, Unity doesn't calculate these values in pixel format. They have their custom format called Unit. Now, if I press on the image then we can see an option called pixels per unit. The value is 100. It means, one unit is equal to 100 pixels. So, if we divide 128 pixels by 100 pixels, the result will be 1.28 unit. However, now I'm going to duplicate the ground mid game object by pressing Ctrl plus D. This should be placed after those two pieces. So, I'm going to write 1.28 into 2 and then press enter. Now, we will make the ground even more longer by duplicating the ground mid game object 15 times. Now, we have to change the position of those duplicated game objects. So, I am going to select the ground mid 2 game object and then position it 1.28 into 3 and hit enter. Because this is going to be placed after 3 ground images. The next one would be 1.28 into 4. Do like this for the rest duplicated objects.
Now we will add the ground end image. So, I am going to drag and drop the ground end onto the ground one game object. Then we will position it 1.28 into 17. Hope you understand. If you didn't, please watch it again. And please do the same thing along with me. This is very important. Please make the same game what I am making. However, we've completed the ground one. But, we can see the position of the ground one is not zero. We should make it zero, otherwise it can make problems later. So, I am going to reset the position. So, after resetting the position, we can see it goes behind to the background image. In this case, we will need sorting layer. So, I am going to select ground start game object, so that the properties of this game object will be visible inside the inspector window. Now, here we can see an option called sorting layer. I am going to click on it and select add sorting layer. Here we will add a sorting layer by clicking the plus icon and name it background. Then we will create two more layers called midground and foreground. After that we will apply these layers for the game objects. I am going to select the background game object from the hierarchy and then select the background layer. Now, we will select all the game objects that are available under the ground one game object. So, I am going to select the first one then hold the shift key and select the last game object. Now, all the game objects are selected, so that we can change the sorting layer for all of these. I am going to select the foreground layer. We can now see the ground game object goes in front of the background game object. Now, we will create ground 2. This ground would be a little smaller than the first ground. So, we will duplicate the ground 1. I am going to arrange them underneath the first ground, so that we can understand what's going on here. Then we will delete some ground mid-game objects from the ground too. We will delete 7 ground mid-game objects from the end. Now, we will change the ground end game objects position. This should be 1.28 into 10. Then, we will now create the last ground which is ground 3. So, I am going to duplicate the ground 2 and then we will delete 2 ground mid from it. Now, just like the previous one we have to change the position of ground end game object. This time it will be 1.28, into, 8, and then hit enter, so that Unity calculates it automatically. So we have created three grounds. Now, we will make them prefab. Prefab is something like building. If we create prefab for each ground, then we would be able to use that anywhere as much as we want. So. Let's start off by creating a folder for prefabs. Now, we will drag and drop the ground one inside the prefabs folder. So, we've just created a prefab for ground one game object. This prefab can be used as much as we want. Now, it doesn't matter if we delete the ground one game object from the hierarchy window. Because, We've already saved it as a prefab. So, I am going to delete it. Now, we will create a prefab for the ground 2 game object. So, just like the previous one I am going to drag and drop the ground 2 to the prefabs folder. Now, we will delete it from the hierarchy. Then we need one more prefab for the last ground. So, 
drag and drop it inside the prefabs folder. You might have noticed one thing that once we create a prefab for a game object, it changes the color to blue as you can see in the hierarchy window. I mean, if we see a game object with blue color, that is a prefab. However, I am going to delete this as well. So, now what we will do is get the ground one game object on the scene view. Because, we should keep a ground by default. The player will need it to run. We will position it like this. In the next video, we will create the player. So, I will see you in the next video.